and go with the actual ca uh, cat's return. That's a nice still. Maybe I can do that one. That's like a, that's more of an interesting still. Let's do that. Okay. Let's let's make a more. Um, let's make a more um, detailed drawing out of this, so we can we can get more meat because it is a quite a simple character. So let's just break down the, this drawing. I I like this drawing. So let's let's break this down. Right. Let's just check if I'm streaming. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Right. So. I'm going to just turn off my safety margins, <coughs> excuse me. So let's, he's got the top hat. Okay, so now, I mean, I'll, I, I generally, to get the hand-eye coordination, I now just work silhouette and shape. I'll talk about the, um, the construction within, but uh, just, just to speed this process up, whenever I make these uh, breakdown drawings or make these copies ever since I've, um, notched my level way up from uh, revisiting Milk Carl. Um, I just tend to uh, to to focus on just silhouette and shape, and that helps me understand the character and the drawing even more, and understand and see more about negative space. So I'm able to teach you guys better. So this thing will come in here, and obviously I'm going to be a little bit out. He reminds me a little bit of a, an anime sort of cat or a wall from. Uh, Fievel Goes West. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Fievel Goes West. I think it, uh, quality-wise, it is, you know, rather garbage in comparison to the first Bluth American Tale. But there is some amazing character design and animation in there by um, the character design by one of my mentors, which is Uli Meyer, uh, who I had the pleasure of working with him when he had an animation studio in England. Um, worked with him on commercials and also his personal movie projects which was an honor for me because i absolutely really rate the guy's draftsmanship and his work but um and the animation in there by the likes of christoph sarand is um is absolutely um outstanding and i think uli told my brother not me that um Andreas Deja also helped out with some of the character designs as a as a favor. Um, he didn't really get credit, didn't take a credit for it. But anyway, but the, overall, I found the film's uh, quality uh, to be far less than the Bluth. Right. Anyway, so let's now talk about the. Um, oh, that's got nothing to do with the cat came back, but a little, or the cat, the cat. Came, I keep calling it the cat, the cat's return, but a little bit of uh, trivia for you there. Right, so I've just done this outline of this drawing because I think it'll be good to talk about the framing of the shot. So there's, there's, this is a nice um, shot where we can see he's, he's, he's holding, he's holding another character. It's not really, but what's, what's a good thing just about the composition is the negative space. Okay, all here. Okay, and how the characters are all on this side and the ears, the ears of both characters, as you can see, are kind of like making this nice symmetry between them going up and down right now let's let's now start <laughs> looking for shapes within there okay so let's look at the original cat okay so his he's got this shape of his head is going to be something like this okay now it's interesting because i don't believe i've ever done an anime animal before i've never really um done one which is why i think uh dylan doster is good in suggesting this to me so he's got one two even more than probably two eye widths apart but he's got a quite wide eye so we're gonna say two eye widths apart okay so always check the eye widths okay and his nose is in line with his eye there like that okay so we always want to check those eye widths okay and it's the same thing even the even though you can see the same thing in here like this diamond shape that i always talk about we can still see that in there that's where the um the foremouth is going to go so uh, make sure that uh, you always look for that diamond construction in, in in characters heads because no matter what character you're doing it's always going to be there and it's always how you can easily find things like the zygomatic cheekbone and the jaw like you see how it all fits in and it all kind of lines up in there it's all very very like in fact this character has got a mask on his face Okay, that breaks up a bit, which I can talk to you about as I detail it in later, but it goes something like this. 
okay so that's where his uh, his main head goes very um, this is an up angle so I chose it because it's more challenging because to be honest when I saw some of the original artwork it's an appealing character but very very simple so I wanted to, to have a more challenging drawing to uh, explain to you how to break this down. So now the ear shape, which I've gone on here, what we want to think of is this square is just lying here like this. So we're, what we're going to do is where the square meets here. OK, we're going to put the ear on top like this and we're going to come down here and we're going to put this ear shape in here like this. And then in here, there's going to be a big mass of um, of fur which we'll detail in later but that's where that little square area so you can see the construction in there how that can be worked out okay now when we're thinking about the angle of the character we got a little bit of the ear here to frame where this hat is so this hat we can think about as just a straight line like this okay like a square kind of thing and then a square coming this way like this we can think about the hat as a square and then all we're going to do is we're just going to cut into that square like that you see and that's how you can really really start getting the angle of the hat and all those kind of things so what what seems quite difficult you see how you can start playing with line and form what initially seems quite difficult is actually quite simple when you um when you think about shapes so again in just off center from this one just off center so not in line with that just to we're just going to do something like this okay and then bring that round there and that really brings some perspective to this particular thing now he's got whiskers and all that but we'll put that all that in later so again here within the negative space i'm just going to fill the scholar here and i'm just going to now we've got coming up here in line like this okay we're going to keep this hair like this and his bow tie is going to come as a square now as a bow tie again what you can do is you can just make a big square shape uh, or a rectangle shape it's not you know just to understand how to keep unity within either side and you can break it up like this on either side like that you see once you understand these simple construction tips you will understand that's how animators manage these shapes this is purely like drawing for animation these are animation drawings so hidden within these uh seemingly like this is a bow tie we don't just draw the bow tie as if it's a bow tie you see get out of that illustrator mentality understand the formula as to how it's put together and you're going to be a lot more successful when you want to maintain volume and form and all those kind of things so Hopefully I've given you some insight there. Now we, we've got some uh, legs uh, as he's holding a woman, uh, which is probably what a lot of guys would like to do, <laughs> but uh, but uh, less of that. So he's got some legs in his arms over there. And now we're going to focus on a triangle coming over here like this. And again, doesn't matter Disney anime, it's all the same, okay? We've got like this triangle unlike this house shape for the hands okay it's all the same because hands are simplified like that because they can, they're just go only one way so we're going to break that up we're just going to go one two um and three like this notice we're coming in this way rather than going straight okay don't go straight that's bad so this is a nice drawing actually and then here we we've got the bit of the hand coming off as he's holding his cane okay his kwai chang cane that he's holding coming along up here like this notice how I'm just going through there like that and then on the cane okay over here we're just gonna put a thumb a square kind of thumb there because it's square and we're gonna do that and that's how we can have this uh, him holding something like that we'll put a line in between so you can see that as I'm explaining this construction it's I'm, I'm being a lot more illustrative but I'm still um, telling you about the shapes now to get the structure and placement right purely for hand-eye coordination in terms of this drawing okay there's no construction tip to it we're just going to make a straight line up there and we're going to continue the cane through like that okay because that goes in with his um his hand over there now here this woman's legs and her socks are going to be here like this okay they're, they're quite cute actually that's why i'm laughing okay and she's got a skirt which i cannot see but the skirt i'm just going to make as a triangle hair like this 
and we're going to break that up. So two triangles and we'll break that up later. Now, before we go on to this hand, we'll now talk about her hand as she's holding on to him. Now she's got looks to have little cat balls. Okay, that's kind of strange. That's really, really strange. So he's got hands and she's got legs, but she's got cat balls. Okay, right. Well, that's original. Okay, right. So then, so then we have her arm coming in here like this. Now, for, I'm going to put in some anatomy, even though it's not in the drawing, just to get everything in the right place. So I'm just going to put a shoulder here like this. You can see the shoulder, if I look, is actually higher than what I suggested with my anatomy. So I'm going to put that up there like that because she has a bulging kind of uh, dress kind of thing on top, shoulder like shoulder pads like that. Okay which we can just do as a round circle like that. And then we're going to come down, okay, as a square in here. This I'm doing purely because of the negative space. I'm just filling in the shape because I can't really talk about construction of her because it's just she's just covered by him. Right, so now his arms are going to be, his. he's behind her, so I've got to imagine where his arms are going behind her. I'm not just going to copy and draw his hand because his hand's coming out there. You need to really imagine... So I'm going to put this triangle here like this, and I'm going to put this line here like this. I can't see any more past that, but um, I can imagine that it's just going to be, it's in line with something like this. Okay, so it would probably be like that. Um, and then here we have the folds and creases, which I will draw later. So now the glove and the hand, which I, you know, which comes about hair, which is a lot bigger than I roughed out. So again, for the hand, I'm just going to put a massive, massive square like this. And we can't really see all of it, but I'm going to put in all of it because I'm going to make it up. OK, because it's just I'm, I want this to be a value to you to explain. So now I'm going to put a square here representing the saddle joint of the phalanges of the thumb. And I'm going to put a straight line here. OK, and I'm just going to come up straight. Now, they don't... I, I'm tempted to do this, okay? But that's a Disney hand, a Disney thumb. We're just going to keep it dead straight like that. See, my problem with this drawing in that regard is if he's holding her, there's no weight on his thumb of her shoulder. So it's kind of boring like that. But that's how it looks in the original, okay? Now, over here, we've got the arm here like this. And we're just going to make like a the first... Uh, knuckle like this okay and that's going to help us really find the others because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two more like this like a, a fatter square and I'm just going to come in and cut in there and we're going to keep these lines constant okay um, I'm not actually although I'm it looks like I'm doing the drawing this is just my breaking down of the construction shapes because the drawing itself it's so simple, it literally is just going over these shapes that I'm making, okay? So while it looks like I'm drawing the character, I'm not. I'm just building the shapes, and then you'll make it look more, uh, tone it down a little bit when he's uh, when you draw on top. Okay, there's going to be a waistcoat, so a little triangle shape here, so figuring out the character's construction. Now we've got this really cute really flat looking head okay so we've got the collar here like this but I like it okay I like it I don't care how basic it is I like it it's like a potato head okay so we've just got this round kind of thing here like that like a Mr. Potato Head kind of thing and um, here is where we've like literally got the floating this could be a cutout character I can't really you know so I'm gonna make this uh, thing to find my form okay in the face but it's so flat that um, I can't really so she's got one two the usual three eye widths apart okay so here we'll go on some real old-fashioned construction because this is easy shit okay so then the eyebrows are going to be sitting right above uh, in line with that above her there and just below off the center line okay the center line is here but off the center line we're just going to put a flat nose like this to kind of um indicate that the character is um uh got a protruding nose and then back on the center line we're going to do this typical anime mouth which i must admit i'm not a fan of it's like a it's like a round house Okay, roundhouse kick with a little kind of thing in there like that. Yes, so, so there you go. That is that. 
Right, and then on top of the that, it's cute though, it's cute. I find it cute. Now, we'll talk about her hair later, but I'm just going to do something like this and something like this and something like this, okay? And then on this side, I'm going to just do something like this because that 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 is going to help me frame her hair, okay? Like this and around like this. And then the ears are going to come up and in line with the other ear now in line with his ear this is what I was complimenting about the composition of the two okay you can have that coming around there like that right now let's go and um, draw this in for you <coughs> so that was the blocking okay so let's draw this in now I'm going to start with that cute face because I like it it's uh, it's it's easy it's quick so let's uh, Let's get on with it. So we've got the the way the eyes work. It's typical anime eyes. We're going to heavy the top. Okay. Now I can't see from here. So I'm just going to put three. Okay. I'm just going to put three lashes on there like that. And I'm going to bring that down like that. Now the rest of the eye is all white. But because I'm drawing, I'm going to put in a round shape like that. And that's basically it. And then inside we've got the eyeball. The um which is the iris and the big big blob of light and then the eye shape here like this okay and what I am going to do because for effect is I'm just going to kind of shade the sides to give her that very innocent kind of gleaming eye okay and the same on the other side so remember she's more or less one eye width apart okay just a little bit more okay and then it's the same deal so we have the 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 kind of rounded shape here like this and the lash is up here and it comes down okay and it's super strong and heavy and that's like framing the f framing the eye one two i'll just put three i can't see the uh, my monitor laptop is quite far from my Cintiq on my setup, so I'm just looking long distance. Okay, so now we're just going to open that up uh, and we're going to put the um, iris in the huge, large iris which fills the majority of the eye. Okay, and again we have the um, the big highlight and the um, pupil. And then what I, what what we have to give it that extra anime effect is that little bit of darkness in there to give it that extra watery, innocent, glistening <laughs> eye that these uh, anime females have. Um, and I must stress to you that I do not, I'm not mocking that. I actually like that. I think it's got a, that's a very, very appealing quality. And that's why a lot of young men uh, have the hearts for anime women because you know it's all in the eyes I mean those 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 glistening uh, soft eyes can communicate even when they're in a simple shape so it takes great skill to design uh, something like that so I'm not mocking by all means I'm not mocking anime in that regard right so the nose it comes out okay it's just simple like this and then the mouth shape let me just put my uh, phone on silent otherwise that's going to irritate me throughout now the mouth shape just kind of comes in here exactly as I drew it really nothing really to talk about okay that's just like that and what I am going to do is I'm just going to put in a few hatching lines in there to give that so you see how we have that that's that's a very flat face but it's in the it's in the style of the what um, well it's not really because I find it quite a contrast to the main character next to it who's got a very contoured face so I, I take that back I, you know I find this to be a sweet character but it's a, it's a little bit too primitive for my tastes now we've got the uh, the whiskers okay which, <laughs> which is this this I'm just laughing because I find it incredibly sweet it looks like when you when you're at Easter when you've got Easter and the kids paint Easter eggs. It looks like an Easter egg has been painted with this character. It's incredibly sweet. Right, so now we have... Um, now remember how I just made a line here like this and I made a, a straight line like this and, and a line here like this. Now I can see that in the yellow. So let's talk about why I did that. I'm just simply going to cut in, okay? So I'm going to cut in here 
and I'm going to from I, I, actually let's take that back I did I started my cutting a little bit the cutting actually starts at the top which is where my construction was so I'm going to cut into it here like this right and I'm just going to keep cutting in to the character so this one comes over the ear like this and this one comes up you see so that's how you start cutting in but it all follows the framework of that line so you know how to basically get to where you want to with this okay so then you have one coming here like this and then one coming down here like this so you can see even though while it was looking like i was being quite detailed in that original mapping you see this is how you can be quite effective and fast is you know if if you get your shapes right you see there's still a lot of detail and a lot of chiseling and carving and adding you see now i'm adding to that line that i put on there but once you get that all mapped out it's literally a case of like it's so easy to then find your way okay because now i'm going to come down here now between the eye here we're going to break up a little bit so there's going to be oh well let's just bring that in that goes goes closer to her whiskers actually so this one comes like this okay because this character is so simple i'm actually finding it harder to get the <laughs> get get the hairstyle in proportion to her face okay it doesn't matter to be honest i could be off and you wouldn't notice and it, the animators wouldn't notice because there's no definite model to that it's just how it's drawn and i'm just doing all i can really do in a scenario like this is a bit of hand eye coordination but still try to tell you about the formula for example <coughs> i've got something like this hair okay now remember that shape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of that shape and I'm going to come in here and in here like this okay and then I'm going to cut in and I'm going to come here like this and I'm going to come and do another one here like that now I'm not really sticking to what I see because I'm, I'm just wanting to speed this up but I'm more or less following it okay and then here I'm going to cut here like that so you can see that hidden in there is that okay and we just got into it it's that's all there is to it there's no that's how you're going to make your hair designs a lot more simpler and easier and particularly when you want to animate them and animate the follow-through if you animate them as large groups as we discussed in that peacock uh video uh course in the real animated training of uh shape simplification you just animate them as large groups you won't have a problem it's quite easy Right, so from here on in, we're now going to start following basically what I had down here. Okay, so I'm going to put her little kind of collar hair like this, and then I'm going to come in and then have her jumper come over like this. Um, I quite enjoy doing these little drawing sessions uh, before the group. I think it makes the it, it breaks up from all the reviews and it gives me something to do and um, gives you something to look at. And maybe help some of you who are not so animation orientated and have no intention of joining my training library um, now I've got a lot more negative space here but I'm gonna let that fly uh, but it gives you an understanding on how to improve just your general hand-eye coordination and your drawing because as I'm going I am trying to share as many little things in there as I can with you okay so right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in and, and draw over my shapes remember how like the as i said we broke it up as a, like a these kind of squares here so i'm reminding you of that okay so that's all we're going to do we're just going to round it off just slightly to, to take away the square element but that's literally all there is to it and you're going to come in there because this represents the knuckles okay of the of the hand i'm not taking my pen off and drawing messy like that so i can just undo it all in one but you get the point okay so now this is going to come like this and again we're just you were just going over that same business of of those of that block that i showed you you can see how the hand is hidden in there like that so so easy when you know how so so easy when you know how and it really is a nice way of really a, a good way of really getting dimension into your uh, drawing is with uh, understanding the the hand the the fingers and putting in um 
putting in those bending and wrapping around the form of the thing you're holding. Which is why here I would have much rather been a wanting to do this with the thumb because uh, he's holding her. But uh, the, the drawing that I'm referring to just simply does this. Okay, What it has got is, is it's got a bit of a knuckle here like this. And what it does expertly is show the saddle joint of the thumb and the um, metacarpal that is there right so then we're going to now just put hair now what we're going to come around here is to just make her sit nicely and we're going to put a little bit of drapery and we're also going to squiggle one like that there like this and his arm is coming here so that's that portion done we already mapped out that that adds up to that so that's the that's the female he that he's holding mr dashing and daring courageous and caring oh, i used to know the lyrics to all of that song gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere right, never mind okay so this is what i find funny about this okay is we have her arm okay and her <coughs> excuse me her little bit of uh, skin fold and then we have this coming up now I've added the arm out there the arm actually cuts in here but I've added it there and I'm gonna leave it there like that because I don't want to I don't want to stay here forever okay I'm just going to stick to what I've got okay uh, so now she's got these little kind of paws which come out like that okay so I actually did that because I prefer it okay so there you go um, and then um, now let's talk about the rest of the character. Let's no, let's do all of her. Let's do all of her because I talked about these kind of mountains, okay, for her skirt. Now let's let's show you how to break that up, okay? So we're going to have a one hair like this, and we're going to bring that down, okay? And we're going to bring that straight down like that, and then we're just going to come in and cut in and break that up, and we get a little bit of a rah rah skirt. I have to say I've always liked. I don't think that's a rara skirt. I just think that's a typical thing. But I've always liked that 1980s thing that Japanese anime still has of those kind of skirts. And uh, it's big in the 80s when I was a little boy. Uh, so it's probably had a lasting effect on me. But that's how we get the crinkles in her skirt. Okay. And then let's just focus on all of this bottom section here. So then we have her leg, which is just simply following the shape that I put. Okay, so that's going to come there like this. And her other leg, which is following the shape that I put there like that, which comes in line with this one. Okay, so that's where we have that. Again, I love using my vector brush because it means I don't play so much. And then her leg is going to be continuing out there with her socky socky. Okay, there like that. Right, so there we have... Um, the whole of her now let's do the hand the hand I've already talked about so it's mere literally is merely just a case of just drawing over what I said so you've got that shape there you cut into there you get the bending and folding of the um, of the finger okay and then you come in here you draw a knuckle you have it always a little trick tip to drawing hands I'll show you in a minute okay that one thing that you really and I, I got this from Don Bluth and Uli Meyer, because Uli Meyer was working on this. You, you can really learn hands by doing old decayed hands of like, you know, elderly arthritic people. And you can really like understand how you can you can make that a beautiful woman's hand or a or a. Um, a dashing hero's hand. But, you know, it does. You should still study the anatomy. So let me just quickly finish this. Let me just quickly put this stick in here. This is just a draw over, nothing really to talk about. Okay, so I'm just drawing over what I had with the stick. And then I will talk to you about the hand. Okay, the, the little tip before we move on to the... Um, before we move on to the... Uh, business of... Um, uh, let's change my color. Okay, so one of the little things that we have is we have the square <laughs> here like this. Now we can put it out as a diamond, okay? And then what we can do is we can then like have, you can either do shapes so or you can do one finger at a time. Now I'm going to do one finger at a time because I just think that that, okay, now I'm going to put this here like that and do that. I just think that that kind of helps me, okay? Uh, explain what I want to explain. Now, 
what we want to do is we want to think about like putting little kind of balls or diamonds or things like this okay and then understanding that these are just the bones okay that come bones that come here like this okay and then what we have is we have other like we have the bones join here so we have other ones so we can just put little kind of ones here like this okay we can put one here like this and then we can put little ones here little ones all the little ones we can put there like that okay so now let me just um let's pink that okay so then on top of that what you can do to get a really like you could you started doing i started like doing these kind of things and then putting like nails on there and then doing this okay and then having something like this okay so then we put that there and then you know again we put a nail on that one and then having an this and then this so as i was working like on i mentioned uli meyer um and american tale too but he was making a film called monster mania um i think it was in goodness i was i just god i forgot how it was just before despero so i was still in my 20s I think I was 29 at the time. Um, I'm 42 now, and I can't. Th my maths is so bad that I can't think while I'm drawing about maths and all that. So um, he, I can't remember the time. He was making a movie that later I think Sony Pictures went for Transylvania instead, and he had this character, and, and like basically like that was the way we drew the hands, and did you just put little Z's in there like that, and then you start putting little warts and things on the hand and you see that really even though like i had anatomical knowledge before but that really helped me start to draw more interesting hands while working with uli on on that because it really made me think and then it made me go back and look at don bluth's nicodemus so even when i was working on um even if you want to do like let's do a delicate female hand okay so i'll do the same thing with with a delicate female kind of hand so let's just then group all of those together like this and let's let's put the little thumb out there like this okay so let's say that I want to do something like this okay so even with the delicate female hand I will put the knuckle in there like this and then I will put the other knuckle in there like this and then I will go against it like that and then here you'll put these two, you put these two kind of knuck knuckles together let's just rein them in okay always thinking about the arc and then this coming here like that and she'll have her like nails so it's the same same kind of thing let's just bring that in okay so it's the, exactly the same kind of thing it really doesn't matter you see this this is still all there okay still all there and it just helps you uh, get a lot better so hopefully i've given you some real insight into an easy way of approaching hands but again it's a lot better when you know the anatomy aaron aox in the audience will confirm that if he's still there right so then the just wanted to include him in the discussion for no reason <laughs> right there we go right so there's the shoulder coming out there like that and uh let's now put the bow tie okay which is going to be again i told you about just bringing everything within the square and we're going to let's have a look at that we're going to cut into that okay and we're just going to come here because as i'm looking at the detail of that bow tie and i've got mine slightly higher but as i said i'm not trying to be i'm just speeding through this uh while uh lecturing and giving you some tips so i'm not try trying to be as accurate as i can be i'll be have to work a little slower if i was going to be doing that right so then around here like this and then just one two like that now the waistcoat is going to come off like that okay so there we have it so i've missed a lot of negative space there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a, his waistcoat in there to unify that okay because we don't see that in there but what we do see is his shoulder hair like this now what we have here is the round look how for the up angle we're going to come round down and around like that you see to get that angle to really sell that angle we're going to really really 
bring this rounded thing okay here like this so hopefully you'll understand that that's how you're going to get a nice up angle is just how you taper your lines on the shapes okay giving really really nice cinematic angles which is what Japanese animation particularly Miyazaki is all about so now we're going to come in and talk about the guy's face okay let's zoom right in so I'm going to slow down a little bit on his eyes here so I'm going to have to look so he's just got a top eye like this and now this is a very cat like much more cat like than his egg like companion okay so he's going to have this and he's just got a slit let me look at that I can't rightly see that eye I think he's got like a slit there like that I can't rightly see it so I'm just going to do that and I think I will do that because that's the only thing I can see then in the middle here he's got his other eye okay which sits on his nose okay which so his other eye comes here like this and we just again see this okay now in the middle I'm not gonna count we, he, he's got a load of little lines okay that's gonna come like this that unify the two that gives him this really like one thing I've noticed about uh, Japanese anime cats like cats are super super cute um, but what I like about the way anime does cats is, is it it makes them a little bit grotesque and it it plays on the same features but you know and it brings up you know sometimes like a Persian cat can be very very cute but it can also be grotesque in, in some way uh, and but appealing and it really plays with that you really anime really captures that right so now we've got this mask in the face so remember how I said we've got this mask in the face hair like this look how we're gonna kind of cut into that so around from the eye where the zygomatic coming into the zygomatic cheekbone we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna give him a kind of like eye uh, cutting into his eye like this kind of thing then we're going to be coming out because his mandible okay would be doing this okay that would be his mandible <laughs> okay so that would be his jawbone so we're going to come out for that patch which is just going to go over where the jawbone is like that okay and that's going to come straight into there now coming down off there we're going to do his upper foremouth and we're going to come up and taper it out like that and bring this down and like this so this is effectively like a straight line okay but it doesn't it, it doesn't seem so but that's what it is and that gives him that nice uh, stoic expression but keeps it with a I really like the muzzle like this drawing is a drawing of two halves it really is like this this cat has got a really nice structured like it's so simple in the in its drawing like it's so few lines this is actually a really nice character because there's so few lines but he's really nicely structured but the drawing next to him like the the woman is just really typical flat anime fodder okay so this uh hair i mean it's just cute and sweet and all that but it really is just flat anime fodder so this this um this hat kind of sits along the side there like that and the ear so it's just I, I've already kind of explained the hat I can't really elaborate on what I said about it it's more or less the same thing that I said I'll remind you of it as I go drawing it so the ear I'm just going to put in and I did say that I will explain about this so remember how I said there was a corner here and we just did that okay that's the same as the woman's hair so where we've done that now I'm not gonna count but we're just gonna break up and make some nice appealing little breakup shapes in there to um, give it that feel okay so that's how you can really you know this is giving you character design tips as well as into how to uh, take shapes and give shapes complexity to give them this um, sort of meaning and purpose so now remember how I said the hat was just a square like this okay and all we do is we just got into that square so we curve this line okay that's gonna be a little bit more to this side here like that let's just get rid of that right and then we come and we cut into the square as I said and then we go ar around the square like this and then here we can cut in and around the square like that okay 
and then here we're going to just go straight off and then curl now this was off center to this never make those things parallel okay and then we're just going to bring that down and around to bring this in for landing that was a nice drawing to do um, I really thoroughly enjoyed that so here you can see um, Let's just bring that in. We've got our nice little kind of uh, compositional drawing of the cat. Let's see, that probably took a fair bit of time. Um, yeah, we're 50 minutes in. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, there we go. So thanks for that, uh, Dylan Draws. That was a great suggestion. I really enjoyed that. So um, AMB is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for. You know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I've seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this, this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so, are you going to join the library?